Welcome back to another episode of Real Chumps. Uh, we're chatting about movies feels like hanging out with friends. I'm your host, Marcel, and with me is my co-host, Danny. And this week, we'll be discussing Bluey. <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to talk about the complete opposite. We're going to go with Extraction 1 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> complete opposite. Very, very <laughs> true statement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, directed by Sam uh, Hargrave with the screenplay by Joe Russo, Andy Parks, Anthony Russo, starring Chris Hemsworth, and many more. So Marshall knew this movie existed. Yeah. But you had not really seen it. But we watched the... The trailer, and if you haven't checked it out, we'll check it, leave it right here. Go check it out, because it was a fun reaction. Yeah. But from that, I was like, you got to go see this film, because I want to talk about it with you. Yeah, and, and I have heard great things about it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I knew it came out like during the pandemic and yeah. stuff, and I was like, okay, I'll get around to it. And yeah. Boy, am I glad that I finally got around Me to too, it. Me too, and I'm so glad to talk about it with you, because I think, like, I mean, there's just something to be said about these types of movies. Yes. And I think I'm so glad to share thoughts because I think, I don't think I like, as I've said it before, like I haven't been like, I haven't really had anyone to talk about these sort of things. And I'm really glad we're doing it. And if you also like to talk about these things, be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast for our show or on YouTube or both or, or not. Please do though. <laughs> <laughs> or please don't. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> then I wouldn't have to be here at one o'clock in the morning. No, it's just, if, just no, it's one o'clock in the morning. We, we're running on fumes, but we're going to let our passions carry us through. That's what it is. Passion. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, we're, okay. You recently, you watched it like, like I, a month ago. I watched the first one. Yeah. I watched the first one, like the week Right before the second one was coming Oh, okay, okay. Because okay? yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, let's watch it. And then I didn't watch the second one until like a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch this movie before we would do the pod. Yeah. yeah. Uh, life happens. But yeah, I, I, I watched it. I'm glad that I saw both of them like within the past like month yeah. for the first time. Really enjoy the first one. Well, and we're going to be talking both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love the, I love these movies. I really, really love them. Like, really, really. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm looking at the rating on IMDb. It only has like a six point eight. But I'm like, no. Like, what, what would you rate it? I honestly would give this like a saw. I would give the first one like a seven and a half. And I love the second one. Okay. The second one, I'm giving it like an eight, eight and a half. I actually, I give it a solid eight for the first one, and then I also agree. With, I think I would go eight and a half for the second one. Yeah. I'm gonna so um. I'll tell you where how my second one where where I watched the second one because on the first one mm -hmm. I I remember being excited for this one because I was like this looks gritty this is like something that we haven't had from uh, from Hemsworth since from from Thor mm -hmm. and I'm like you know what I just want I'm here for this grittiness and they touted this just like they did with they later again redid this with. Um, the gray man where the Russo brothers were involved. Right. And I freaking love winter soldier. Yeah. And so something about the action, something about the, like the, like raw, like just the up in your face with the action that just gets your blood pumping. Right. Is sometimes, especially with like, you know, superhero films or even other films that are like in these, this sort of action genre, it's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why I love John Wick. Like the first John Wick had these, like you're in those, they're trying to make it as realistic in the sense of like the action as possible. And Sam Hargrave is, came from that world. He was a stunt, a, a stunt coordinator, a stunt coordinator. And you said it before, and we're going to say it again. We need more recognition for stunt coordinators and for stunt actors. For yeah. All of it. For all of it. Why the freaking Academy doesn't recognize these people is uh, another reason why the Academy is like the, fizzling out. It is. It's tragic, but it is part of the thing. And I think this is a wonderful movie to talk about because this movie is phenomenal. So, so if you haven't seen it, so this movie yeah. obviously starts Chris Hemsworth. He plays an ex like soldier military yeah. operative. Right. Um, and Tyler Rake. His name Tyler Rake, which the best name for an action hero in like the last decade, right? And <laughs> you know what? What I what I even love more is that they call him Rake. They call him Rake, and yeah. only his close friends call him 
Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. At least we see that in the second one, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get there. But I agree with you. The name is so good. It's so good. But, but also, Tyler... <laughs> sorry. So Go ahead. super side note: the Spanish Latin band Rake also phenomenal. <laughs> Did you ever listen to them? I, yeah, what's that one famous song of theirs? Uh, oh, um, I, I, I know, know what I, you're talking. I about. know I have them on a playlist. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, There's a picture of them right there. <laughs> go, go listen to them. Go listen to them. All right, Tyler Rake though. So he's a uh, a former operative. He's now like a black market mercenary. Um, but when a child, when a kid of a of a drug cartel in india gets kidnapped by a rival cartel tyler rake and his team get called in to do an extraction to Correct. pull him out and 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 save this kidnapped child um that's the premise of the movie Bas Sim simple basic and and we're introduced to the character immediately and and we just go but yeah that's that's the premise and to me i think that these actually like it's a these I've said it before. I'm gonna say it again. That like we need more films that just are are clear and 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 have a beginning and a middle and end. Yeah, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think part of I have some thoughts, and I want to share. But I want to hear what your thoughts are on that because you haven't seen as many Netflix movies as I have. That's true. And I think Netflix has been doing that a little bit more. Or they've been doing it with some of the other films. And, and I think more studios are trying to get just... It, it lacks a little bit more now in the studios. They've gone for much bigger productions and, and kind of like trying to like tell more of an elaborate story. But I, to me, there's something to be said about these types of films that we don't get anymore in all, all sorts of genres. Uh, I, I think... I think my issue with like Netflix movies is that they, it's hard to like define what they're trying to portray or, or to met, get their message across. Right. And, and a lot of times they're just choppy, like just film kind of choppy and edited in a, in a weird way. Whereas this one, like you said, the story comes in, we know what it's about. We we're given the premise right away. We're introduced to the characters in a very succinct and, efficient way like both o ovi the child that gets yep. kidnapped um his dad and what he's involved in and then we go we jump over to tyler rake and like him jumping off a cliff and like meditating underwater like we know we 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 uh, we're told everything we need to know to this point and we're bought in immediately yeah right and so i i i, I like that netflix is fine tuning that aspect with great writers like the russo brothers yeah right who, who are incredible um and i think this movie does that really well from other ones from netflix what other movies did you have you seen from like netflix then um i started what's the one that michael bay did six underground or? yeah six underground oh my gosh i that, got like 10 minutes into it and that's very not, michael bay i just couldn't i got literally 10 minutes into it i'm like i, I can't do this <laughs> I can't. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Um, the what's the the rock one? The red notice. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Um. Uh. I really. I I actually enjoyed the other uh, Ryan Reynolds one, Adam Project. Oh yeah, that one was good. That one was fun. I got teary eyed through yeah. it. Like it was a good movie. Okay. Um, okay. I just wanted to get a little bit of like a like a sense of where because yeah. I understand. Like I definitely to me I definitely feel like. The, uh, there's something to be said about Netflix. They are trying to produce content. They're in the business of right. pumping content. And it's pretty amazing the fact that they have as much content that they've pushed out. Like they, they're in a position where they're pushing out a like film slash, you know, I think a film is a big thing, but like also TV shows mm -hmm. on like a weekly basis yeah. throughout the year, which is just wild <laughs> in, from a studio. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. But it's also really phenomenal but it also comes back to the fact that like why these teams should be paid in a residual situation because people are going to binge them they're going to rewatch them when a new season comes out right like all these things need to be in a factor so again we will try to find we'll have links for if you want to support the writers guild and the actors the sh all the things happening right now so they can continue doing what they're doing to make it better for everybody but with this film 
with these action films and having it be so concise in like just be simple premise, mm -hmm. but they over deliver in the execution. Oh yeah. And I, I love that you brought it up that like from the very like out, you know, like what, 10 minutes, maybe, maybe, maybe less where we, we have who the character is. Mm -hmm. We know what the conflict, the, the inciting incident and, um, we have the objective. Yeah. What more do you need? Perfect. Perfect. I'm bought in. Uh, I'm hooked and I'm ready to go on this ride. Right. And I love it. Yeah. It's, it is. And I think to me, it's like, it's just a reminder that like, we don't need to be epic. Mm, yeah. We don't need to be epic. We, no. we can just, and this could be a, like, this could be applicable to like a, a rom-com to be applicable to any other thing. Like, like find that, that what you want to have there and just like, let's just sprinkle in like other little conflicts, which are phenomenal in the first one. Mm -hmm. I, to me, that Rake is dealing with like some sort of issue with his family that we don't fully know. Yeah. Other than the fact that his son might have probably dead. Yeah. Right. Um, which I, I do love that jumping off the cliff scene. <laughs> I think I loved it more the second time I watched it though. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I think I think part of it's because like I watched it once and like I I saw I saw his journey. So the second time I come back to watch it, you like you I already know who Rake is. Yeah, yeah. As like uh this individual who's very he's a he's a he's a scalpel in the military he's he's a very efficient he knows what he does right right but there's like this weird like kind of not hobby but like vagabond military sort of feel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have a lot of these right like in in this type of like character has been portrayed in a lot of different like tv and i don't know i think part of it is like chris hemsworth the way he portrayed Rake mm -hmm. throughout both films. Yeah. Just really a like interesting character to kind of grow with. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, yeah, we, we've seen characters like this, but this one, characters that, that are, you know, former Marines, former black ops, whatever it is that carry some trauma. Yeah. But what's great is that his trauma isn't based on like the war. Right. Right. His is like a personal trauma because his his son died of cancer like we we learned that later on in the movie right right and so it, it it's this for up, up up to like that beginning while he's jumping in in the water and he's just sitting there we don't understand this but we get an idea of like this is this is a guy who's who's like almost playing with like death like yeah he's okay like yeah. he might dr drown in there and he's okay with that like or break his legs yeah because that thing is freaking i really want to know if he jumped yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, like, it, like it, it's such a great way to introduce a character who who we we know that he's probably okay, especially because the movie starts with 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 this shootout in in on a bridge. We don't know if this is yeah. happening, you know, now or or whatever, and and we're pretty sure he's about to die, and then we jump into like that back the 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 kickoff to this story right? right and he's now in the water and we're like okay like this is a man who who plays with fire and he is probably very comfortable with the concept of dying correct from the get-go i love how i love they did this in like do like india yeah i know uh and it's very stylistic when it comes to like the color and like the 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 whole sphere but like as i watched it more and more because i've watched it like four times maybe five oh, okay, times okay. i've watched at least the first one yeah um because i just it was like, it was just like fun watch i could like i watched it twice like watching it uh -huh. and then i think the last couple of times i've watched it like as i've done a couple of things and you look over and you catch you catch like a really great scene yeah i think when he comes to get the when he gets the, the kid uh when he gets ob for the first time mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the first time you get to see Hemsworth like just wreck on some people. Right. It's phenomenal. It's so good. It's so good. But go, going to to this, uh, what you just brought up about it taking place in India. Um, so I don't know if you know this, that this is based on a on a on a graphic novel. Oh, I didn't think I'd realize that. Written by the the Russo brothers. So they Ooh. and 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 uh, Andy Parks. Okay, so they okay. wrote the 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 graphic novel. 
um, and it's called Ciudad, and it originally takes the graphic novel takes place in in Paraguay. Oh, okay. Okay, and so same following Tyler Rake and everything, yeah, yeah. and then they adapted it to they adapted their their own graphic novel into into the film. So I love the the idea that yeah, you could have gone again traditionally. Or stereotypically with a, a drug cartel somewhere in South America, right? Right, but they didn't like they yeah. they they chose to do it in India and and the style of it. Um, I I had a gripe with the with just the 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 filter of the the orange or, the, the, yeah the, that orange ish. It, it's the I think I think actually it's not a filter. I actually think it's um, a color grade. Yeah. Okay. The way they decided to color grade it more weight like heavily orange especially in some of like the upper like when they're outside yeah. up up in the the rooftop sort of thing um I, I didn't notice it very much the first time i watched it but as i watched it like progress uh, you know as i've watched it more i'm like oh they they were they, heavy-handed they on it. very heavy on it no for, for me it's just like okay like i understand hollywood has this idea of like whenever we're in the middle east or in india or Egypt or wherever, we're always going to do that gradient. <laughs> it's no, like like orange. Yeah, yeah I'm like okay. Yeah, I like, I actually wonder if it was more like a stylistic choice. Now that I know it's a, it was a graphic novel, okay. like they wanted to be, like it would they wanted to have it to be have more of like this like, not comicy but like, sure sure, the, you know like this sort of like extra feel. Yeah, I definitely think they toned it down in the second one. Oh yeah, the second one much better yeah and again i don't know if whatever it was but but yeah i, I would agree with you on, on the, the aspect but, yeah that was my one like my if i have one major criticism it's that like th yeah there were times in the movie i was just like this is just too much it's way too orange for me but uh <laughs> it, 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 it happens sometimes it happens. yeah no, i get it it's great i i loved every aspect of this movie um and and just being able to talk or, or just being able to see rake just trash these people okay i love that again chris hemsworth is like six foot four <laughs> tall dude and just a massive guy and he's like beating the crap out of these like six foot five foot eight individuals and just they use his 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 body yeah and his physique for for that right yeah. um like the way he just kicks people off of like kicks him off the ground yeah right and it's just it's so he's a force of nature yeah i i agree i loved and then what i even love more is that they saju who is played by mm -hmm. deep huda is like his like is equal yeah right he he's 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 also a military person they do a phenomenal job in bringing that tension um with him mm -hmm. as a character um and it's quick like the, i think one of the things that i just learned so much in in the, particularly in the extraction is that like look you know you get a budget you know maximize your budget to tell a very concise story and i think you know again now that i've like realized that it was based off of like it was a graphic novel they wrote you kind of have to do the same thing with graphic novel right with like you know graphic novels in comics like yeah. you you need to use every single panel to not not only visually tell the story but also like motivate move the story along in like what you're doing you only have so you can't put a paragraph in you need to have the dialogue in there to be able to, to make impact right mm -hmm. now obviously we have both in those in, in this situation every time we do cut to a dialogue every word that comes across is either you know like providing a little bit of context or motivating the the maybe like the conversation slash movement of what is going to happen, mm -hmm. right? It's not just like banter for banter. Right. And that's something that like, I think I didn't, again, because I've watched it se several times, I've come to like really appreciate that yeah. and recognize that like, oh, you know what? If I get to start, if I do, when I do my first film, a couple films, like let's try to like, let's not just have, like if we're gonna have a moment to feel like, let's make it important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When we don't, let's like motivate the story so we get information that we need, maybe a little bit of exposition or maybe right. just like provide some more insight to the character or to the situation that causes greater conflict for why we need to, right? In this situation, Sadhu has to like 
he needs to get the son back, mm-hmm. right? Um, feared for his family. The, the whole situation then gets escalated because now we know that the right-hand man is going to come after Rake and try to get... And is now actively working against him getting the objective. I like that you mentioned that, that... <clears throat> you know, uh, creating uh, moments of dialogue that, that let us feel in these action movies. Something that I absolutely loved in, in both of them, and we'll talk more in, in, in the second one, but I love that we have the one we'll get to the one in a sec, but we have the one that's 11 minutes, and then after that, the, the movie then puts um, uh, uh, Obi and, and Rake in hiding yep. in some warehouse, and that's where, where Obi like really digs to understand Rake. And Rake opens up, tells him a little bit about his about his child, um, and some of that guilt that he carries. And then in the second one, after a twenty one minute wonder, <laughs> okay, oh, I love it. Okay, we'll get to it. Uh, but after that, after that twenty one minute wonder, um, then we're in that we're in Austria and we're in that building, and then. Rick has that moment with um with with the boy i forgot the boy's name but uh of 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 like saying no like your mom has sacrificed and all and and we have that emotional moment right yeah i love that after these massive big scaled action sequences they very smartly put that emotional moment right after yeah i'm high on like these endorphins like kicking in on my my, my Blood is pumping after watching this. Yeah. And then you very strategically put this moment of emotion. Yeah. Not not to like quiet me down or to slow the movie down, but it's very strategic to say, here's here, here now, now that we've seen our characters go through this massive action sequence, we are going to bring him down and we're gonna invite you. We invited you as an audience into this experience. Now we're bringing you into this emotional connection mm, i love it and i love just how well placed both movies are very they they mirror each other yeah. in that aspect and for me at first i was like oh they're just right when that one or in the second one ended i was like ah, they're gonna go into an emotional moment here and they did but it didn't bother me like yeah. I, I needed that as a viewer yeah to have that yeah and it was perfect oh. other mo- other action movies Sometimes, like you, you, I, I agree with you. I think the part of, uh, I think Russo brothers know, they know what they're doing. Yeah. They, they, they. I think they love this genre. They love the feeling of these older films that that I don't know what their full influence is, but like these films that have sequences that were impactful, that were big mm-hmm. moments, that then have something that brought in these same sort of feelings, right? Um, and I'm sure if I found, if I went scouring, I could find some clips of them talking about what, what inspired them and sure. what brought this thing. But the thing is like, it is, and it, 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 they're not, what I love about the Russo brothers and what they've done with their direction is that they didn't just do it for the sake of the story beat. I think what they've done here is that because the film is in, in such a small time frame. Mm-hmm. Right, we're following them for long sequences in a scenario. We're not, we're not cutting in time, a lot. These, this is happening in a not real time, but like relatively in um in a short time frame. Right, we might cut a couple, like you know, couple, you know, thirty minutes, twenty. We're not cutting four days to a whole another you know situation. Yeah. So like, there's something to be said about having these moments bring people because when you go on a road trip right you grow you cock you have little situations in this scenario you're like you are being hauled this you know obi's being hauled by this white guy <laughs> who's freaking super tall wrecking house on all of his father's uh and rival gang members yeah. and like all this situation right kids are after him <laughs> like what Something to be, and not only that, but like the fact that like the kid himself, Obi, also isn't as like shook yeah. as maybe other other kids might be. Yeah, because he's he's I'm, grown up. He's in grown this. up. He's he understands that this might be something that might is there yeah. in the whole aspect. And I, again, I think it just comes back to the fact that like if you're gonna tell a story, 
and you you only you're you know you don't have a budget for like something crazy really like look at your characters and then say what can we do to help make like what things can we whether again comedy in in this case action like we're gonna make a really great action sequence mm -hmm. we're gonna make it we're gonna do our due diligence we're gonna bring great trainers we're gonna bring stunt coordinators who 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 understand how to handle to do camera work to get what we want make it super immersive but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay off some of the things we we bring in we're gonna showcase that like this is a kid who who wants to be normal mm -hmm. but yet we, he's put in a situation that when he get finally when things settle down he's like chill yeah he, i mean he's nervous sure he's stressed all right he's playing the piano so he can like try to calm himself mm -hmm. right but at the end of the day He's recognizing things as a kid that then brings greater depth again to Rake's character. And all these all these little things is just like to me, it's a wonderful like class. This is a film that like even if you're like not a huge action fan, fan, film fan or even like you're like, I don't know about Netflix films. This is a film that you can watch once and you're like, that was cool. But if you go to watch it again and you watch it again, you you pick up on these little things that are like are just so good. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I love that you brought that up. I, I think too often action movies are just go, go, go. Not criticizing no. John Wick no. at all. Um, but I, I felt like, I can't remember if it was the second or the third one. It was just nonstop, right? Yeah. And and we're being introduced to to more of the of the larger world, etc. But I love that we take the, these moments and that and that the Russo brothers took time to really incorporate those emotional beats and those beats to like sh show the character growth, yeah. right? From both from both our protagonists. Ah, that's great. That's great. Okay, now I didn't know you came into it knowing there was gonna be a second one. I'm gonna tell you, I was pissed with the ending, but also like like somewhat sat like weirdly satisfied, but also like, oh. They went there. Yeah. yeah. And I think part of it is because like, because I think I talked about this, was it last, last, in our last episode, I, that like, or it was in Dial Disney, that like, we, we're in this time where like, every film almost feels like, like, is this going to be something that we're going to continue making? Yeah. Yeah. Is this going to be a, a new series, like a new series or whatever? I'm not saying that I want that for everything. Uh, like, I'm a, I, I love TV. I love serial television because it, you get to build characters, mm -hmm. right? And there's something to be, to love about that. But in a film, you also like, there's like when it's big in a big production, you're trying to grow something. It can also be difficult because like, if you leave on a cliffhanger or whatever, is there, to me, I, like I said, like I was like kind of upset about it, but also I was like, I don't know. It's just like, why? Of course that would happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like this guy is like he just he, like his crewmates, people that he 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 respected, were killed because someone else was trying to is disrupting the whole right. situation. He's pissed. I mean, that's that's upsetting. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. He had to, you know, he had a friend in town who then he had to like freaking uh, betrays him. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Did he kill him? I can't remember now. Yeah, he kills him. Yeah, he yeah. kills him. Right. Yeah. He has a kill friend. Right, because he freaking betrays him. The whole and then, and then trying to like just finish the job, even though even though the the people that hired him don't want to pay him, and he wants to have, he's a death wish for himself. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got a death wish. Like again, it's just like this weird payoff that like, well, he could just not try so hard. All right, right. But that's not who he is. That's not who he is. No, that's and so I, good. So and so when I found out when we did the. For the second one, I yeah. was just like, yes. So it's interesting because, like, again, I, I went into it knowing that there was a second one. Yeah. And when that payoff happens, it was satisfying. Part of me was like, well, how are they? How are, wait, what? <laughs> how are they bringing him back? Yeah. Right. But it, it 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 was satisfying as an individual movie, right? Yes. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, and like you see, like at the end when Obi jumps into the swimming pool and it comes out and there's that shadow back there oh it was so good that <laughs> shadow silhouette standing in the background i was just like is it rake it's gonna be rake, it's gonna be rake. <laughs> oh but uh, i loved it okay let's let's, let's talk about the one yeah because these about these movies now have a signature um uh, yeah they took they took a lesson from daredevil yeah 
Yeah. And they're like, let's, you know what? Let's and one up the, those guys. Ten times up it. <laughs> um, so, Danny, for, for our listeners, can you explain what a wonder, wonder is? I think we've talked about this. Oh, we didn't talk about this. I think this is actually in the extra, in the actual video. But wonder is when the team decides to uh, do a sequence or a scene that is not going to have any cuts. So what that means is that when filmmakers are planning this so sequence, not only are they doing a pre-visualization, which is like how they're going to do the whole sequence in like not the setting, it's just trying to figure out the camera work and like placement for the fighting. But it also means that like when they're doing this this whole sequence, once they get on set, that they're going to rehearse it a couple times. But then they're trying to gonna they're going to try to do they might do it several times. But they're trying to do the whole thing in one take mm -hmm. um, without having any mess ups or, you know, causing, you know, like it. The idea is that, like, you don't feel um, you're, you're as immersed that you can be for the se sequence, because when you have a cut, you're especially in like action in action scenes, you kind of cut to the fight to add a little bit additional impact. So adding when daredevil did it mm -hmm. it added just that extra level of like of a like a level layer to the story yeah and i think in this one even adds like you are immersed into it mm -hmm. because whereas in in daredevil what we have in the winter is that we get the, we get a sense of daredevil's like brutality mm -hmm. and his like what he has to deal with in these sort of conditions in this one, we're following him in a lot more of a. We're following Rake and Obi in the in the situation in being chased and having right. to deal with all these uh, coming like unknowing what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Whereas when you can uh, when you cut, you can you're you can switch to a different perspective, and then you know like to add that tension. And so like, it's a stylistic choice. It's also um, a story tool, which I just love. Mm -hmm. And. I love that we're, you know, we're leveraging these sort of tools in these films more and more. Yeah. Um, because they're just, they're fun for viewers. They're fun for filmmakers. Uh, all just all around a good time. Yeah. And I, 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 what would episode, I think it might've been Knives Out. I don't remember, mm -hmm. but I talked about my love for, for winners. Yeah. And then it was, I think it was after that you were like, oh, have you seen Extraction? <laughs> And I wish you hadn't told me that there was a wonder. Oh, oh I'm so no, sorry. Right. It's all right, man. But I, I, you told me it was like several minutes long. And, and when I experienced it, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is great. I love it. <laughs> so the movie, so the wonder starts with, with an initial car chase. Yep. It goes into like a building, um, apartment building, apartment something. building where, where he's fighting off a bunch of people. And then it goes into a brawl on the streets and then into a last car chase. All in like 11 minutes. Yeah. Which was wonderful. I, here's what I loved about it. You And you just said it perfectly. Daredevil, let's go back to Daredevil. Daredevil, Daredevil when they did it, right? It, it made me feel like I'm experiencing the pain, the brutality, the the desperation of, of of daredevil to like get out of this situation right i also feel like the struggle like it's yeah. tired like he gets, he's tired you're exhausted with him yeah right whereas here i'm i'm experiencing this getaway this chase i'm literally in the back seat because sam hargrave the the director literally takes a camera puts it in the he's in a car behind them chasing them right with the camera he gets when they stop they remove the harness that he's on he walks around puts the camera in there so the camera so the, the the scene can keep going um but i'm i'm in the experience i don't know i i felt the danger yeah but i wasn't like exhausted when i was like with, with daredevil right if anything i was just like I survived this. Like, let's keep going. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, going back to what I previously said, like it pays off really well with the next emotional beat that happens right after. But, but it, it, it is, it is so good. These, these people are so talented. And, and if you have the opportunity to see like the behind the scenes of, of it. Wow. Phenomenal. It is, it is just like, it, it, it opened my eyes into so much. He's literally jumping off the building with them. And it's, it's so cool. Like, Again, these 
these uh, stunt coordinators that make the transition to be directors, such as like in John Wick, um, it, it's powerful. And it they bring an element that other directors don't have, right? Here's, here's my take on this. And I, this is why I think that these guys know why it's so powerful it's because they're all they're already they're doing when when they're doing when stunt coordinators are doing these sequences they're already having to film it for pre-visualization which is like again the sequence that they pre-create so directors and other team can have an idea or so actors can learn their beats right okay i'm this person i have to go here i have to go here i gotta duck over you know i'm gonna be punching throwing whatever i gotta hide behind the corner here so we have this we have the whole situation in in that aspect right and so they have to film it it might be crude but they still have to do it right so they Mm -hmm. they learn some of the those camera techniques i think on top of that is that like they're already like in a world that they're trying to figure some of the things out right and so because they have this the language right and they're comfortable getting in these kind of like crazy situations they're comfortable understanding um you know what i'm gonna go digital i'm not gonna go film i want to be i want to get into the action i want to i want to carry this stuff and and move it around that adds that extra little flavors to otherwise where like i'm gonna go i might with a steady cam or, or whatever like it just there's something about that that like they understand yeah and it's the same thing I tell with like clients or even like the, I, I experience myself that like, that's why I love shooting, editing. Uh, like I work with people, like I produce and then I shoot something and then I edit something and then I deliver something and then I analyze things because like, then I have this experience of the process, right? And I can empathize slash understand what they want to get, hmm. right? right? I may not be able, to, I may never have been able to, I've never done something like this, but I know that I have the skill set to that like understands what we need to ha- needs to have happen to tell that story. Sure. So like Hargrave can come in and like, you know what? Okay. I know some guys or mm-hmm. I know, um, I, th- in, you know, like Russo's, they come in like, we want, this is the script that we want. We want to do a one or here. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to work on that. We're going to make it, we're going to, this is what we're going to do. Blah, blah, blah. They figure it out because they're, they, they want to make it good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I love that. Let's. Uh, anything else on on extraction one? No, I think that is good. Well, uh, yeah, let's go extraction two because this freaking movie. And 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 listeners and viewers, we're gonna have a go check out our our YouTube page because we're gonna break down our our favorite scenes from extraction one and and two. Um, yeah. So if you want to see a little bit more of our love for extraction one, go check that out. Yep. Um. Okay. Destruction too. I so so listeners. So this movie picks up immediately right after Correct. the first one. Tyler Rake barely survives by I don't know how. Here's the you know what I I'm, <laughs> sometimes sometimes I I'm like oh how can he survive? But this guy's a military guy. Sure, sure. Also, he falls in the river. That <laughs> uh, there's there is like you know like you can. I'm like, I don't know. If it's cold enough river, it can slow some blood through or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I was okay with it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Look, for, for, in, in order to keep the story going, let's just, he survives. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he survives. He's in a coma yep. for some time. And then, um, he, he, it's, he's pulled back into the game, uh, to take on another mission to extract a family that's in a prison in Georgia the country georgia yep um and that's yeah how the game that's, that's how it starts let's let's actually we're on the topic of the oneer let's let's can we start with the oneer oh we can start with the oneer bro okay. so let's actually listen to an, to an interview from from uh the director sam and he was saying that the Russos came to him and said hey for the next one how awesome would it be for for rake to have to escape a prison <laughs> and that's how they pitched it to him nothing else but how, how how awesome would it be to like escape a prison that's all he pitched to them yeah and they're like okay to, or, sorry the russo brothers pitched to sam to sam okay 
and he said, "Let's. How about we do a oneer from him is, uh, escaping a, a prison?" And that's that's how he's like, "Okay, we'll figure it out." Now this oneer is twenty two minutes long, dude. That's freaking long. This movie is how long? Like two hours? Yeah. So, not quite a qu- yeah, almost a quarter. Yeah, of the movie is a oneer. Yeah. <laughs> that is wild. Not, not only, not only is it a wonder, okay, it involves, um, oh, it's uh, probably like fifty people. No more. Yeah, pro- maybe more. Probably more. Seventy-five, hundred people. Let's say a hundred. Spoiler alert for for my favorite scene that we're gonna do the breakdown. Go watch it. It's it's one of the moments in this in, wonder. In this, okay, so for me, uh. I mean, the fact is, is like the, it's like so many people, they also like, I love that they're going in all uh, Rainbow Six style. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, quiet in, trying to get in, trying to get out. They've already set everything up again. Like to me, what I really appreciate about these, the, the, this, this rake uh, series, this rake movie rake movies that with extraction is that like the russo brothers have written it to 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 again just re-emphasize like this is the objective and this is a story whereas like in mission impossible they have this objective but on all this stuff happens and you know they go like it's super worldwide and right. like i just love that it's like this is what the job is the job is you your your sis your ex-wife ex-wife uh, your ex-wife's sister is in a prison because she's married to some huge, I don't know, cart. They're not even cart. They're Just drug. A, they're, a, a, a arms dealer. Arms or something? dealer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's in prison? Yep. And brought he, his family. He brought his family so that they could be in prison with him, and they've been they've been raising kids in, in prison. And she, and so your ex-wife wants the sister out yeah. with the kids. Just, and that's the mission. Yeah, extract the family, okay, and we're and we're gonna get them, like, out. It's personal this time. It's personal, which I thought was phenomenal. We also find out, you know, his his ex wife is alive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, right? So that, that was something that like, well, what was going on? I mean, not that we didn't. I don't know. I, for some reason, I thought she might have been dead too. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but she also got cancer. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's she, a bad joke. <laughs> yes. Sorry, sorry, guys. Anyways, but uh, that that wonder is the the choreography, and not only that, but like the freaking Mazatov cocktail. Okay, so so I'll I'll just say it. so. My my favorite scene in that, and we'll talk about it, is is the courtyard scene. Yeah. Okay. Um. There were. 200 extra no 200 yeah 200 extras with 100 uh stunt coordinators that's how massive of of that scene is but the that molotov cocktail and that's chris hemsworth on on fire fire. it's have you seen have you seen the behind the scenes on that (laughs) don't Don't tell tell, don't tell netflix (laughs) but we're lighting him on fire I love it. It's great. Um, it, and it's what what I love about it, which I think they did a lot better this time, is we're seeing because it's personal because this is you know his ex wife's sister and 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 the kids. We are seeing Rake not only have to physically endure this and deal with it, but we're seeing some of that emotional conflict be introduced to it. Yeah, that's going to pay off later. Yeah, right. We're not we're not given everything emotionally in this scene because there's so much happening, but we're given those we're planting the seeds that are going to eventually pay off later in this movie. Right. And I love that. Again, incorporating character development and character growth in an action sequence is absolutely the best way to go about it in, in these action movies, right? Yeah, no. You it 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 um Mission Impossible does it mm-hmm. with the you know with Dead Reckoning, uh, uh, Grace and Tom w- with the car chase scene. Yeah, growth in this one. It's I what I you know what I what I also really love about this is that like in the first one, um, he's so on point. Yeah, and he obviously he, he like 
he's like kind of thinking he's in retirement whatever he gets this call he like goes to work right he's like i gotta get i gotta you know i gotta i gotta stop being a bum or whatever so he gets he, you know gets prepped but in the sequence everything's going smoothly like mm-hmm. this guy you know he's back in he's back in the saddle but of course you get in a situation like this 200 freaking guards or uh 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 inmates duking it out trying to fight they're having this whole freaking chaos she gets separated right right and then gosh the intensity the intent the the, and what even what's even because they're doing this in a wonder we don't know there there isn't that cutting of camera angles to see what's happening here here's where chris is at and here's where she is at right no we have no idea what's happening to her it's it's just it just brings up the level so much more and i think what's what's really what then i think part of this is what why this this movie elevates it is it like i don't know if they're gonna go another person route right and i don't know if i want that yeah yeah what i do what i do appreciate is that we like because of this situation to get him back in and to get him to a place not only between rake but also rake and the the girl who, what's the, what's, what's her name in the actual? The sister? No, no, not the, not the, not the, not the sister-in-law. The, his female, the one that cares for him. Oh, Nick. Nick. Oh, dear. Dude, Nick is phenomenal. What's her, what's the actress name? Golsh, uh, Golshifte. Farahana, Far, Farahani. Farahani. Phenomenal. Yeah. Beautiful. She was, she was solid in the first one. Yeah, she was. You know, she she was intriguing, and like the whole team is intri- like, w- w- what t- what organization? This one introduces, um, what's his name? I just forgot his name. The brother? Not no, the guy who brings him the the pro the the actual job. Oh yeah, uh, Idris Elba. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he came on on the screen, I was like, Idris is in this. What? <laughs> And he's all mysterious. He's all about mysterious. It. I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah. So and and so like the whole thing again. They're doing like they're playing with the whole John Wick like world. They're building a, a world in here. Yeah. Which again, it's like one of those things where like in a film. What I love about what they did here is that like if we never know anything more, totally fine. Totally fine. If we do, great. Yeah, yeah. But like in this one, I I love that like Nick and rake have the the moment of like like understanding one another not only like but we get to know that like she really cares for rake she mm-hmm. like she to some degree maybe there was something there for them but they just it wasn't gonna ever be or she found they found each other after the hold up situation and like just like what are you gonna do with rake yeah right yeah or maybe they served together Right, like maybe they were together. They started this whole, like, private sort of situation, and they've just been they've just been through it as like experienced military operatives, and there's a they have a they have a family bond there. Yeah, and I love that we got to see both Nick and and her brother, uh, yeah, uh, Jazz, right, mm-hmm. have more of a role in here, right? Because like, it feels earned. Yes. Going back to the first one, because in the first one, they were giving the, the directions, the directives, the, you know, guiding him. They didn't get to be in the field with him. And now it's like, oh, no, these guys, they can hold their own. Yeah. And they deserve that position that they have in the previous one of, of, of being the directives because they can hold their own because they're just as good as, as Rake. Right. Right. Oh, it, it, it's awesome, dude. I was heartbroken with, with the brother, with, with Jazz. Jazz. With Jazz. Dude. It, it hit me. It it does though. I think part of it is that like we we get again just if you're gonna do a smaller film, if you're gonna do something that like don't go big, don't go big. Yeah, tr- tr- like give yourself restrictions because when you give yourself restrictions, you really gotta you have to consider what what are the what's the what's the, what are the things that I'm gonna do to help motivate the story to bring the payoffs that we're gonna do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, we get this thing where like. He he gets Rake a shirt, right? <laughs> that Rake is like, well, I'm not. What is this? What is this? Right? That that he that he's close enough that he will give him a gift. Yeah. Right. That he that he and his, his sister, you know, Jazz and Nick have a, a deep connection, but they're also live the same sort of life that might be difficult. That like he's found a way. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna live my life. 
I'm going to live it the best I want to live it, right? And then have it be like him understanding what the job is. It's it just, it is really great storytelling mm-hmm. for a film that is so simple in a plot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, about the family. Um, so the son, so so the sister, sister in law, the sister in law has two kids. Yes. So Sandra and Nina are are the are the kids. Um, I really like how they gave a, they gave us this weird relationship that Sandro has with his dad. Right. It's such an abusive, toxic, very wrong relationship. Where the dad obviously as an abuser, as 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 a narcissist, controlling the family to the point where they he brings them into prison to live with him, right? But the son ah, wants to live up to the dad's ex, you know expectations. He wants to he wants his dad to be proud of him, so that he can join the the Nagasi. Is that what the so, the, yeah. the the gang is called? Um, but but then seeing again providing rake as the other father figure to him Mm -hmm. right and and putting rake in a position to yeah he was a father figure to a degree to obi in the first one but here to sandro it's a lot more emotional because of the personal connection right right and sandro calling him out on the fact that yeah at least i at least I, my father didn't leave me, right? Right. Bam! That hit so hard. Yeah. And you see it with, which, by the way, Chris Hemsworth as a as a as a dramatic actor, we need more of. We do, and I'm. He's not. I don't think he's gonna do any more films. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know he's like taking. Well, he's taking like a, a break. I don't know if he's taking a break. Or, like I don't know. It's it's a little it's a little unclear. But like I, I'm also because like I agree with you. He does a he does a really honestly beautiful job like tapping into those like emotions and like um like i think he actually does a better job in these this role than he does in like the like serious but like comedic role yeah you know i feel like for for those thor movies he he shows up they they let them you know imp- improvise and, and have fun crack jokes and that's fine they there's do, a there's a great. yeah there's a place and time for that but like to to Give Chris Hemsworth the the content the 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 script that forces him to pull out these emotions. He is really good at it, mm-hmm. and I really want more of that acting side from him. Mm. And, and 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 it's and it's done so well because he, he again he has this emotional moment. He's with Sandro, and 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 they go back and forth as to why Rake is a, was a bad father and why Sandro's dad is a bad father. And they have this 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 battle of ideals of of parenting even, and 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 finally it kind of hits Sandro to the point where he says, "Dude, I messed up. Like, I called I called my uncle and told him where we were at, at right? Yeah. Um, but it's just I love that side. I love again that after a twenty two minute wonder uh, filled with so much action, we are then pulled in to this small room and for them to just have this dialogue between the two of them." Great job on also the the actor the the kid Sandro yeah does wonderful yeah no and I think to me again like they they bring such the the people this organization this gang are not like they set the tone when they kill the guy um, they bring him in he like oh we didn't you know this didn't work out and like okay cool. Dead. The, the the prime minister, right? Oh yeah, yeah. prime minister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you, you know what? You know, you know, good to us anymore. Uh, you're dead. Yeah. To me, I was like, oh yeah, these guys don't mess around. I appreciate that this was not like, uh, look, like a la John Wick or a la Fast and the Furious, a villain from the previous movie that was somehow impacted, right? Correct. This is a completely different part of the world. Different villains. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. I also appreciate the fact that, like, they, like, they, like, they showed the level of, like, of control of mm. their country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
the thing is like you know you like you have the cartel like they don't kill i mean not that they don't i mean cartels do kill like a ton of people and they kill like leaders or whatever but they're not killing like top leaders like yeah. on a daily basis right? right on like oh something yeah. didn't go well right like there's leverage for them or whatever they're like trying to keep there's like a bill bounce the fact that they straight up kill him <laughs> yeah it, it just shows the level of like what they're willing to do what they have control over what they're doing and the threat that and they the are. threat they are right right and so which again just brings in the payoff that they bring they have a whole sequence at the the this safe house building that they're hopeful mm-hmm. you know they're thinking that they won't you know they'd be fine but because uh he calls his uncle and not only that but like the the conflict between in the family alone mm-hmm. yeah just you know like look do we really need to do this yeah i i love the dynamic that sandra has with his mom as well right oh, yeah and it, and it, it hits so well because you you you've seen the abuse that the mom has taken from dad right yeah. and sandra just continues to defend and and wants to be proud wants his dad to be proud of him and and just oh that conflict and it pays off really well at, at the end when when he realizes like yeah like there's the line that 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 um rake says to him like yeah i killed your dad but your dad was going to kill your mom yeah like what side are you on man i love it it's great it's 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 great stuff i'm gonna tell you my favorite scene and well obviously we're gonna go do a breakdown but like i love the train i think i would also add probably uh nick's fight not on the train but on the top of the building Oh, and the yeah, tension yeah. that happens in that sequence and just like the i don't know the, the intensity the level of like the the threat the like hurt that those two things there's something about that again i think i, I just grew to really like nick i really honestly i would love i would totally i would love to have just a whole a whole movie where it's not even chris Hensworth, chris just Hensworth nick, yeah. and just nick yeah. and with some other character yeah that'd be cool actually I just I don't know she's she she did they did she's a phenomenal actress they did she wonderful fight choreography that she brought in mm-hmm. felt really it was it, it was just just as good as like in, in in the situation that I'm like okay what's what's going on here she she obviously there's she can, helps she operates as one of the, the leaders for this organization or company or whatever mm-hmm. right um, has skill sets very similar to Rake but Rake obviously is like the elite. He's the he's the one that's never gonna get off the floor because he's the one that is the best operator. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have people who like are good, but they like they're better leading. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And in life. That's the thing is like I, I don't know, something about this there's just like little moments like, you know what? Some, are you gonna be are you who's the leader in the group? Who's the one that like just gets the job done? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And I don't know, really phenomenal overall. I, I to me, I just like Netflix really locked it in with this with these two movies. If they do another one, that's awesome. If they don't, awesome. It's wonderful. These are great. Uh, you know, I don't know. What, 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 I don't know what I want to watch. I, you know, I want something that just is a, is a, is is a got action, but like you know, I enjoy. Yeah, I can throw this. I can throw this movie on. I'm gonna enjoy it. it. This is it. Yeah. One last thought on my end. I I wanted to reiterate, and we talked about this in our episode with Mission Impossible, uh, with Dead Reckoning, just the practical use of like practical stunts. You know, Mm -hmm. going back to you just mentioned the train scene, right? Like, and we'll talk about this in our in our other video. But like, that's a real that's a real train, and that's a real helicopter, and and that's that's Chris Hemsworth, twenty feet away from the blades of the helicopter, and it adds to the authenticity it adds to the threat and one thing about this second one uh besides from uh, apart from the first one was i always felt a sense of danger and at throughout the whole movie i felt like oh someone's not going to survive this Mm -hmm. and i love that movies do this right make me feel like no one is safe because I, as an audience, don't feel safe, and I'm experiencing this with the characters. I'm experiencing this with everyone else that's watching it. 
and that and and again the criticism that we had with with Indiana Jones was just like I never felt like anyone was in danger. Yeah. Never. And maybe that was intentional, but that pulls me away, especially in those action sequences. Not here though. I always felt the sense of danger. I was always concerned and I was I was brought into this. And 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 I think a lot of that yes into the choreography, the fight sequences, but a lot of that is just the practical use of of, of these practical stunts. And I loved it. I'm excited to talk to you about Gray Man. Okay. Because and we're not doing this anytime soon. We're just I'm like I'm just talking like spit on here, but like I just because like they the Ruser Brothers also wrote that right. Also or wrote pro, or produced. I, I don't. I can't remember if they wrote it or if they just were producer or if they direct. It's a little hard, but like I really enjoy the Ruser Brothers. They, they just they're great filmmakers. Yeah. Um. But uh, they went a little bit bigger. With Green Man. Hmm. But I truly wonder, because I've been, I I really, after watching Green Man, I, I always have this habit of like wanting to, I read the book either after or before I see the, that film. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, And uh, so I've, I'm like on the sixth or fourth, I think fifth or sixth book of the Green Man series. Okay. And he's, the Green, uh, Court Gentry is a, a super awesome character um, in this like military spy sort of like genre. Yeah. Action thrillers, I think is what they're called mm -hmm. in, in the, the book world. <laughs> um, but I actually think that they could have, they would have, that movie would have been better if they'd followed a little bit more on the like extraction side. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they did follow the book pretty good. Okay. And so I think that like it was a good, it was a good, it was a good option. Anyway, so I'm excited to talk about you with that because I think we'll have some good thoughts and, and share those. Yeah. Is that what, we got anything else? One last thing. <laughs> yeah. I was just reading my notes. Yeah. There's there's a fight sequence in like a gym, <laughs> which is great. But there's a death there from the leg press. Oh, my gosh, bro. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I remember see, when I saw that, I was like, you know what I was, okay, I forgot to tell you. I, I downloaded this movie to my phone because uh -huh. I went camping when it came out. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> you didn't tell me this. And I was like, I, I just, I'm like, I, I got, I want to see this. I want to see this film. I don't care that I'm like watching it on my phone. I don't care that I'm like in camping. I'm like, there's like, camping hardcore campers are like that's not a camping that's dude a camp listen <laughs> me watching this film in my freaking sleeping bag not to try not to wake my girls <laughs> right wanting to breathe because i'm like losing oxygen because <laughs> i'm breathing so heavy i think sadie asked you like are you okay <laughs> i'm on <all> fire <laughs> but like when that scene hit i was like oh and i'm so glad i didn't wake up my daughter <laughs> because dude, i I let out a big like, oh, I know. I just, that, it just crushes. <laughs> I'm afraid to do a leg press ever again <laughs> after that scene. Oh, sticking to kettlebells. I'm just, I'm just going to regular squats. Yeah, I'm just going to stick to squats. I, I just saw that. I was like, oh, I love it. Genius. No way to use no, like. Yeah, the whole brutal. Yeah. It's, I think, uh, it just. If you're gonna like again, just visual storytelling of like, honestly, it felt almost. What is it, Buster Keaton, right? Old school, mm -hmm. like black and white, like yeah. the. Actually, this is action film in like the most brutal sense of action film. Mm -hmm. I mean, John Wick. In John Wick, we get like, um, gunplay. We get fighting. We get like a lot of brutality things. And this is it. The third one, with the eye, with the knife. Anyways. Oh yeah, yeah all of it like there but in this fight scene what i think is just like it's just like you're if you're fighting in a gym that would be a terrible that would be a not only terrible but like terrifying slash also like like you have so many heavy things yeah like if you if there's, you know if you're cables ropes like there's yeah all sorts of things like it just like is so good and it's on a rooftop. And it's on a like, rooftop. I mean, yeah. you're like like top level yeah, of a yeah. building. Yeah, yeah. The, he, uh, Sam Hargrave, the director, was saying, um, someone asked him, uh, what what uh, what tips, what suggestions do you have for like up and coming like directors? And he said, 
take take your favorite like action scene from any movie and recreate it beat by beat. Okay. Oh man. Learn how that director did it. Okay. Yeah. And just for the first couple times, just re recreate that scene beat by beat, uh, angle by angle, shots by shots. And then when you've done it two, three times, then you can start like once you know. yeah, once you know the scene, then add your your piece to it. And he talks a lot, he he, he says he, he he would do this with the Jackie Chan movies. Oh. Like a lot of his influence comes from like those Jackie Chan movies. Who and, you know, Jackie, yeah, uses a lot of like practical stunts, but like uses everything that's around him yeah. know, to fight. And he just says, just do that. Just take a scene that you love, an action scene, and just recreate it yourself over it's and over and over again. Truly one of my, my, my things that I have yet to, to check off my list mm -hmm. of like, I, I need to, the, I need to do this so I can like learn. Yeah. is recreate is to do an action sequence yeah it's like okay what is what does it mean part of it's like because i'm like i'm like i'm not gonna call my friends to get hurt i'm like i need to like i need to go call like a gym like a <laughs> like a like a you know like whether that be like a you know a jujitsu gym and be like hey guys i want to do this sequence like mm -hmm. can we do you want to partner up just for like the heck you know kicks and giggles because it does like it's it is freaking it's a workout like you yeah. know like it there's something having to do a replay anyways great that's a wonderful tip yeah, I thought it was awesome. I like that. So good. Okay, that's Extraction. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. it, it they're solid movies. They're super fun. Have them in the background. Sit down, watch them, experience it. It is it is one of these movies where I wish Netflix had released in theaters. In theaters. I agree. I, I think it would have been... Man, watching it, even like in an IMAX... Not even an IMAX, just in a regular theater for yeah. one of the like for the second one in the Wonder. Yeah, the helicopter scene would have been freaking intense. Would have been awesome. Yeah, um, so good. We truly, truly a fun gift. Chris Hemsworth and team, Russo brothers, put together Hargrave coming in doing his thing. It's truly some beautiful, beautiful storytelling, wild action, and a good time. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, we would love it if you could subscribe on whatever platform uh, you like to listen, as well as give us a five-star rating since it helps us get discovered on, on the charts. More importantly, uh, let us know what you thought in the comments down below or send us an email at your at realchums.com. We haven't said that in a while. Yeah. But uh, definitely you can do that. Um, again, we will be releasing some scene breakdowns of like our thoughts, why we love it, uh, what, you know, that everything you know, on YouTube as well as some uh, trailer reactions so be sure to subscribe there you can follow me on Twitter at review underscore TV I'm also on Twitter at Marstrosity M-A-R-Z-T-R-O-S-I-T-Y join us next week as we discuss Poker Face I'm so freaking excited to talk if, about this if you're a regular listener you know we, we love Ryan Johnson yes and this is his uh, series on Peacock. Peacock. So make sure you watch and come back and listen. Catch you next time. Later.